Hello and welcome to this lesson where we're going to take a first look at creating some sounds in Cubase elements. So first things first, we need to run the program. So in the case of the Mac, I'm just going to search for it on Windows. You just tap the Windows key and type ELE for elements, and then hit enter to run it. You get the warning that you've got so many days left. And then we get into the Steinberg Hub. So this is normally the first sort of falling point for people. So you think you've got to use a template and this, that, and the other. We're not going to do that. You're going to do a bare project, which I'll show you how to do. And then we're going to create everything from scratch because then you know how to do uh, what you need to do. So this is, I'm, I'm strongly from the uh, teaching people how to fish uh, school of teaching. So here we go. So we're going to ignore all these. We're just going to do create empty. Now for the time being, don't worry about the location. Don't worry about the project folder. That doesn't mean anything. We don't need to worry about that. So you're just going to click create empty and we get a new project. So here's the project window, which we probably saw in the last video, but this is where you're going to be doing a lot of your work. Now, the first thing you want to do, which might seem a little strange is to save your project. Okay. The golden rule for this is do not move the project from where you originally created it. So you're just going to go to file and save, or you can do control S or command S depending on what you're on PC or Mac. And then I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it first instruments. You can call it what you want, but give your projects descriptive names rather than just thing or whatever, because then it's much easier to know what you're coming back to. So going to do that and then whenever we want to save it you just have to do the same thing again don't name it don't move it there's your first uh, golden rule so now what we're going to do is to create an instrument now there's two ways you can do it you can either go to project and add track and then pick instrument or you can right click or in the case of a mac double finger click in this area here and then go to add instrument track it's exactly the same thing so that's what i'm going to do here now we get a new window which appears, this one here, which is picking the instrument. So for the start, we're going to go for Prologue. So you will see possibly a different list of synths because I've got uh, Cubase proper and some paid for plugins on here. But Prologue is included with elements. So just click Prologue. We just want stereo out. That's fine. So just click Prologue and then add track. So a couple of things happen. Firstly, the big Prologue window appears, which you can see here, but also behind it, in the project window, we have our track. We're going to be dealing with that kind of thing later on, but if you just leave that as it is, it will work perfectly. We're just going to start playing around with the Prologue synth itself. Now, you probably don't have a MIDI keyboard, so you think, well, there's no way I can play it. But fortunately, that's been thought of in Cubase. So we have uh, an on-screen keyboard. So I'm just going to load that up, and you do that with Alt-K. So if you look on the keyboard at the bottom of the screen, you can see holding down the Alt or Alt key and then pressing K and then the on-screen keyboard comes up. Now, when this is active, a lot of the other keyboard shortcuts don't work. So you probably get used to toggling it on and off doing that. Okay, so just the same key press again. So now if I press this note here, the C, we can hear that our synth is playing something, which is great. And you can play on screen if you want to, but hopefully there's a bit of a clue that you can play it using the keyboard. So, etc. So you can see in the insert in the bottom right, that's what I'm doing on the keyboard and it's instantly reflected. Okay, one thing you may notice is if you press more than one note, you only get the last note that you press played. So this is what's called a monophonic synth, mono meaning one, phonic meaning sound. So it can only play one sound at a time whereas a polyphonic synth, as we'll see later, is capable of playing chords. But this is fine for bass lines, etc. So talking of bass, if you want to change octave, you can use the cursor keys, as you can see, and that moves the indicator down, and we play different octaves. So super low up to annoyingly high. So you can quickly change that and start playing. So, you know, bass line kind of things. That kind of thing. So with a bit of practice, you can get playing on this pretty quickly. Now the default sound on Prologue is a sort of squelchy bass type sound. 
but there are hundreds of presets to play around with. So this is another area where it can be a bit daunting at first and also it's not immediately apparent what you have to do. So the preset area is this black window here, which doesn't tell you anything by default. So it's not obvious that you need to click there, but if you do click in this black window, we get the preset selector. So there's two parts of it. We've got the filters on the left, which allow us to filter down the list of presets to things that we want, such as strings, organ, etc. And on the right, we've got all of the presets which fit with the current filter. So at the moment, there's no filter applied. So we're seeing all the sounds. There's 334 of them from five miles out. So 80 stabber all the way down to Zaxxon. So to hear one, if you just click on it, it gets loaded up. Make sure the on-screen keyboard is active and then you get your sound. Etc. Okay. So with an on-screen keyboard, it's a little more awkward to audition them, but we can load up something. Try not to get a copyright strike, but you probably know what I'm going for there. Uh, all the way down to Zaxxon. Ah, Zaxxon. So some more experimental kind of timbres. You can also use these little arrows here to move up and down. So that's Zap, the one before. So, you know, definitely uh, Craftworks Tour de France extended mix with a, etc. There's loads of good sounds in here. You know, and this is a this is an included synth with this trial. And obviously, if you buy Cubase Elements, it's not too expensive and you get a lot for your money, I think. So, yeah, loads of sounds here. We can filter it down. So if you want to laugh, you can hear what it thinks a piano would sound like. So by clicking this, we're then going to have just the one thing that matches piano. So you can see there's only one grand piano. We load that up. Not quite sure that's a convincing grand piano but it does remind me of sort of 1970s uh, film soundtracks, etc. To reset this, if you've done this, you can either click on it again or you can press reset. So you should be able to find uh, some interesting sounds and it's worth going through them because the names, you know, while the names are reasonably uh, meaningful, they're not going to tell you everything and you might find a sound you think is absolutely amazing and bear in mind, you know, a sound you think amazing, some guy up the street is going to think is the worst sound ever. So... It's all about experimentation and learning uh, what the sounds are. Now, once you've found a sound you like, actually, let's change that for something a little more. I'm going to go for 80 stabber. So the on-screen keyboard has a few more tricks up its sleeve. So while you are limited to just playing single notes, etc., on here, if you click on it and hold, you'll see the mouse cursor will change to a sort of plus. And then you can move that. I'm going to change to a sound that's going to be better for that. So that's better. So if I move to the left and right, we get pitch bend. So it smoothly changes pitch. And if I move up or down, it sends modulation. So on this sound, you can hear we're getting vibrato. So that allows you to create some performance characteristics, so you can play around with it, but you just need to click it and hold it a bit. You can see if you try and press the key while you're doing that, the on-screen keyboard doesn't work. So it's it's a bit limited in some ways, but it's generally pretty good. And then all those notes you played come through, which is an interesting effect. The keyboard is only an octave, so from Q up to I is one octave. You can hopefully hear that's the same pitch, but an octave higher. But in the second mode, which where you click this little circle, it goes a bit further. So it's only two notes further. So it's only two more. But, you know, if one, one more is enough for Nigel Tufnell, then two more is enough for us, I think. So it just means you've got a bit more musical range to play the kind of things you want to play. So that's Prologue. You've got other things you can play around with. It. Obviously, there are many controls you can see there's all these controls down the bottom but I, I don't think you should get too bogged down in it feel free to have a play with it if you want to alter anything the filter cutoff frequency knob which is right at the center and you know the sort of focal point of the um, interface is that one there and 
You can hear that makes it sound dull in the case of this filter, but we've got these different filter types, etc. This is definitely not a synth sort of workshop kind of series. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna say, you know, have a play with it. And if you screw it up, if you've, you know, played around with a load of things and suddenly it sounds disgusting, which this doesn't, because I've managed. But anyway, if you make it sound really bad and you're not happy with it, just change back to another one and back to it and it'll be back as it was. So you're not gonna break anything. Have a good experiment. So that's Prologue. Now the other main included synth with uh, Cubase Elements is Halley and Sonic SE. So what I'm gonna do, there's, there's a few different ways we can do nearly everything in Cubase. So what I'm gonna do is just delete this track and go through track creation again. So we're just gonna right click or double click on a Mac and then remove selected tracks and then add a new one again. This time I'm gonna go for Halley and Sonic SE. So that's what you should see. And then when Halley and Sonic comes up, when you click our track, there's a little bit of a delay, but Halley and Sonic is a bigger synth in some ways and has a lot of sounds which you may find useful for creating, uh, in quotes, normal music. So there are two sound sets with it, SE Artist and SE Basic. So if you click in the orange area here, you can pick which content you're using. So we're gonna stick with basic. This has got the general MIDI sounds. So these are kind of general sounds which you would find for normal composition. So they tend to be real instruments in quote, and then it goes through some synth sounds and then a few sound effects after going through some ethnic percussion as I believe it was called. So this time, if we load up piano, it's exactly the same kind of thing. So we've got this filter section here and then the actual sounds which match with that. So in this case, grand piano, just gonna double click that. And now we can see what often happens with this. So if you haven't got the focus on the keyboard when you do this, if you press the E button, Halion will change between one interface and the other, which can be a bit confusing. So if you just press E again, then it will uh, calm down and flip to whichever one you want, but you need to actually click on the on-screen keyboard, which is a little bit annoying, but we'll just have to deal with that. So now, we can hear, we can play chords. Again, I'll try not to get a copyright strike, but. So you can play around with all those kind of things and actually start playing a bit of music on that. We've got loads of these sounds. They still do the same kind of thing as uh, the Prologue sounds. So we've got, on some of them we'll have pitch bend. So obviously you can't do pitch bend on a real piano, but you can on this. And some have vibrato as well. You can play around with there. There's 185 sounds in that sound set. And in the artist one, there's another 350 to play around with, which are you know some interesting things. There's all sorts of things like 1210 backspin FX. So that's gonna sound typically like you would expect. And there we go. We've fallen foul of the E again. So easily done. Okay, so there's Halion Sonic. There's uh, Prologue. All I want you to do is to just load up and play around. So just have an experiment with them. Try and find some sounds that you like. Uh, get used to the interface, so making tracks and deleting them, using the on-screen keyboard, maybe using a bit of pitch bend, although obviously on a backspin effect sound, we're not gonna get much, but maybe on 80s string ensemble, what could be better than that, so. Yeah, so there you can hear the modulation, etc. So just getting used to it, just this, this part of the interface, so just synths, playing around with that, and then in the next video, we're gonna look at how you can do recording. So I'll see you then.